You see, he's asking the church this morning, what are you wearing? There's the helmet of salvation. We're almost through. It says, you know, you know what a helmet does, right? I keep pausing here, but you, I mean, it protects the head, right? That's why they made the helmet. To protect the head. Because if, if, if the brain gets cut off, then that's it. You know? If you get two eyes plucked out, you can't see anymore. You know, if, if the nose and the mouth get covered up, then you can't breathe anymore. It, it, this is a critical part. I mean, the brain it, it controls everything. It, it shows you, you've got to protect this thing. You know, the ladies are doing this Bible study on, on, on Monday nights, the battlefield of the mind. Joyce Meyer, what a great book, what a great study. You've got to protect this thing. That's what the helmet does. What then is the helmet of salvation? What is salvation? See, that's the question I ask. What is salvation? The world says that um, some people believe that only some can get saved. You know anybody like that? There's only a select. That's what some religions would have you believe. Only some people can get saved. Just, just a select few people. Some, some would say that, that everyone is already saved. I've heard that one. Have you ever heard that one before? There's, there's a preacher. I can't remember his name. He was a great preacher, a great man of God. And all of a sudden, the, he started putting on the wrong stuff. And he came to a conclusion that everyone is saved. You're already saved. There is no process. There is no relationship. You were just born saved. You understand? So th there's some people that say that, th that once you get saved, you can never lose your salvation. I've heard that one before too. That you can enter into a relationship with Christ and that is it. Apparently your free will is dead at that point, And you can no longer choose what you want to do. That if you get saved, that's that. You can live the way you want to live. You can do whatever you want to do. You can live like the devil till the day you die. But because you got saved in that altar 25 years ago and said the sinner's prayer, then you're saved. I've got news for you. That's what the world is telling you. That's what the world is conveying. But that is not salvation. It's not salvation. That's not even anywhere in the Word of God. What does the Bible say about salvation? It says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you believe with all of your heart, and that if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. If you invite him in and tell him to clean you up and ask him to forgive you, if you receive him, he'll receive you. If you draw nigh to him, James says he'll draw nigh to you. That for whosoever would call out to God, they would be saved. Like the thief hanging on the cross. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said, no problem. You're with me, my friend. See, that's, that's, the, that's the moment that you get saved. But is that it? Is that, is that it? And as I tried to read to you a few minutes ago, because I got ahead of myself, because, like I said, I'm really excited about this stuff. Amen? Thank you on the front row. Philippians 2, 12 and 13 says this, that we have to continue to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. What I have learned about salvation through my own experience and much more importantly through the word and the truth of God is that when I got saved, a process began. That when I got saved, that was not a destination. It began a journey. That that is what salvation is. And according to Hebrews chapter 6 and even in, 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 in I believe, 1st or 2nd Peter, it says, you know, this is something you can lose. I mean, this is something that you could drop, give up. That it's something that you have to ask for. It's something, it's a, it's a place where you, re, you repent and, and you no longer live for you and now you live for Him. That it happens in a moment, but it begins a journey that will take a lifetime. And that the realization will not happen in this life, although we will experience heaven on earth. But the moment we cross from this life to the next, we then will know the real heaven. At that point, we'll see the fulfillment of salvation. You see, that's salvation. That's what God's trying to cover your head with. That's what God wants you to think about. A relationship with Jesus Christ. A mind, the, what did Paul say? He said, I want you to have the mind of Christ. Every day, day in and day out, talking to Him, praying to Him, more importantly, listening to Him, getting in the Word, seeing what He has to say every day, day in and day out, the most important relationship that you could ever have. If you're going to wage war, don't listen to the world. Listen to God. Put on the helmet of salvation. Get into a relationship with Jesus and stick to it 
every single day. 